On Monday, Justin Trudeau made some bold allegations. And if attention is what he sought, he got it. The media took notice. It made the headlines. Governments were more reluctant to believe allegations against India without Canada providing credible evidence. They made functory noises and also made it clear that they would continue to deal with India. You see, he made a dangerous gamble. His Khalistan gamble has now backfired. Canada's closest allies have voiced some pretended concern and then carefully backed out of the Trudeau corner. And by Tuesday, Trudeau was embarrassed enough to say to the media that he did not mean to provoke India. Excuse me, if such allegations are not a provocation, then what is a provocation in Trudeau's estimate is the question. Clearly, the Canadian Prime Minister is out of his depths. What can be more provocative than accusing the government of a murder on foreign soil? It seems that the Canadian leader needs a lesson in international relations. He has not understood that foreign policy cannot rest on partisan domestic vote bank politics. Trudeau's actions have triggered a domestic boomerang effect as well, by the way. Trudeau and uh, the Liberal Party of Canada have uh, consistently pandered to extremist elements in a particular community to get the votes of the Canadian Sikh community. In real terms, only about 2% of the Canadian population identifies as Sikh. But it does make Canada home to the largest Sikh community outside of the Indian state of Punjab. And Trudeau appears to be playing a short-sighted game of vote bank politics by offering support and shelter to extremists. This is not a secret. This is why his own credibility has come under question from his closest allies. In this sordid episode, his politics is also causing ripples of concern within Canada's own borders. Canada's opposition leader, Pierre Poilevre, has taken a jibe by Justin Trudeau. He has made it clear, if the Prime Minister is right, he must come clean with all the facts. He has said, and I'm quoting, the Prime Minister has not provided any facts. He provided a statement. And I will just emphasize that he did not tell me any more in private than he told Canadians in public. So we want to see more information. We need to have the evidence that drew that allowed the Prime Minister to come to the conclusions he made yesterday. Trudeau's pursuit of vote bank politics could ultimately cost Canada dearly. In terms of trade agreements and arrangements with the world's largest market, India, the Khalistanis are running an immigration racket and Canada has become a sanctuary for those determined to wage a war on the Indian state to break up India. They plot and scheme and pursue a violent agenda from Canadian cities like Brampton or Surrey. They exploit freedom of speech with incendiary calls to violence in India. There is enough history, there is enough evidence. Just have a look at the way they display grotesque tableaus depicting Indira Gandhi's assassination, who was martyred. They glorify dreaded terrorists like Talvinder Parmar in Baisakhi Melas. Shockingly, the Canadian government under Justin Trudeau does nothing and its silence is encouragement of this kind of behaviour. This behaviour is not only allowed to fester but is even rewarded with power. Key supporters of terrorists and secessionists are in positions that directly impact security and foreign policy of Canada, raising serious concerns about the priorities of the Canadian leadership. As for Trudeau and his inner circle, for a man who wanted to cultivate an image of himself as a liberal statesman, what we are seeing is a troubling mix of entitlement and bitterness. And he has steered his country's economy into troubled waters, by the way. According to Reuters, Canada's economy unexpectedly contracted in the second quarter at an annualized rate of 0.2%. Growth in July likely remained flat, this second quarter performance fell far below the Bank of Canada's forecast of a 1.5% annualized GDP. 
In fact, some American economists are now suggesting that the Canadian economy may have already slipped into a modest recession, raising serious questions about Trudeau's economic management. Trudeau did not hesitate to deliver his sermon even after being snubbed at the high-stakes G20 summit. However, when Trudeau asked allies like America, Britain, France, Australia to join his condemnation of India, they demurred, they stood their ground and resi resisted Trudeau's push. According to the Washington Post, the Biden administration aimed to avoid antagonizing India and therefore no public mention was made before the summit. According to the Washington Post, the Biden administration has no desire to antagonize India. And Trudeau persisted in his efforts to raise Niger's killing with India at quote-unquote the highest levels of government and even attempted to issue a joint statement with his allies condemning the act as a violation of international norms. He got nowhere. The political dynamics at play, you see, were palpable on the global stage. So what do we have here? A major snub at the summit in New Delhi, after which Trudeau did not hesitate before creating an unprecedented diplomatic crisis, linking a crime in Canada to its international relations. And now he is trying to wriggle out of his own stupidity by saying that the idea was not to provoke India. If he did not want to provoke India, why did he expel an Indian diplomat without evidence? And what is taking him so long to substantiate his allegation with proof? Is it because he knows he fabricated statements for own interests and his own lies will be exposed? In the meantime, he has done long-term damage to bilateral ties between India and Canada. Even Canadian business groups are not taking him seriously. And the Indian Finance Ministry says this diplomatic showdown will not affect Canadian investment in India. Remember, India is a democracy, a democracy which is open and transparent and lives by both national and international law. By encouraging India haters, Justin Trudeau has only managed to hurt himself badly and hurt Canada-India relations. And the scars of this political injury will not disappear at least as long as Trudeau is in office. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.